Hello and welcome to the program for a review of what has been a busy few weeks for Audi teams across Asia with races in Korea, Japan, Thailand and of course the four driver Audi Sports R8 LMS Cup team making their debut at the iconic Spa circuit in Belgium for the annual 24 hour race. Well we've been to the Middle East with the Cup, we've been to Germany's famous Nürburgring twice to the streets of Adelaide but this is the first time we've been to the Spa Francorchamps circuit and that was something very special for the drivers and the absolute racing crew. It was a memorable event and we'll take a look at that a little bit later in the program but Mark there's plenty coming up. There certainly is first up let's take a look at what was a tough round seven for the cup drivers at Suzuka in Japan in pretty testing conditions. Back at Suzuka Circuit in Japan for the first time since 2017 for the fourth race weekend of the 2019 Audi Sport R8 LMS Cup. In qualifying, Andrew Harrianto set the top time from Alex Howe. The second row, the points leader, Yasser Shahin from Burdbur and Barkley. Tony Bates and Vincent Florendo share row three. Then rookie George Nakas alongside GD4 frontrunner Shozo Tagahara, Wang Deng Jia, and unfortunately for Shang Yan Wen, damage in qualifying means he won't start this race. With heavy rain falling as we were on the grid, the racers had to start under safety car. We'll get a couple of laps in, I'm sure, before they finally let the field go. It looks like it's into pit lane now, and that will mean the pole sitter, the man who is the reigning champion and needs a win this weekend. Andrew Harrianto will lead the field down across the line to start lap two with a handy lead. Alex Howe immediately behind Yasser Shahin, the points leader, then Birat Birambakti, Tony Bates, and Vincent Florendo. Lots of miss, they get through turn one safely. At least they've had a couple of laps through now behind the safety car. This is a replay of the start. You can see just how treacherous it is on board from Tony Bates, number 24 entry. Up to 220, 230 kilometers an hour, but down at the braking point, there's a river across the circuit. They need to be very careful. One man being very careful on his debut, Shozo Takahara, driving for Audi Team AS Sport, the local team doing a fantastic job on his debut in the cup. Andrew Harrianto continues to lead the field around, but Alex Howe's looking pretty racy, closing the gap. Yasser Shahin sticking with them. But how about George Nackers on debut, never driven a GT3 car. Here he is on debut at Suzuka in the rain. Oh, Alex Howe's gone in deep down at turn one, just held it, just kept it on the circuit, and the CDVS races entry carries on. But wow, that was very, very close and highlights only again just how treacherous the conditions are. You can see the rain's intensified after the start, it's very difficult for them to pick what each lap's going to be. Wang Deng Jia, great job for him too in just his second start in the cup, second in GT4 behind the local driver. On board with Yasser Shahin. Oh, he's gone in deep too. That's turn five. He's got a little bit wrong at the S's. Ran off. There's enough wide runoff there for him to rejoin. He carries on. But how about Andrew Harrianto? He's carrying on. He needs this. He hasn't had a win this year. This would really work for him. Tony Bates back after neck surgery, hasn't run since Shanghai, he's rebuilding too. As Deng Jia's found the limit of adhesion down at Degna 1, which is turn eight, he's managed to gather it back up again and carry on. Look at the lead now that Andrew Harrianto has managed to eke out over Alex Au. But that looks like it's Burt Birambakti in third position. What's happened to Yasser Shahin? Coming through Spoon Curve, heading up towards the top of the hill, he spun it not once, but twice, he's making a habit of this. 
He's the master of the 360s, but he could lose track position to Burrett Berenbach. He needs to be very careful. He's engaged gear. He's gone away, and the tie driver's got past him. That is a change for position. Yasser Shahin, the points leader. He's regathered. He's OK, but he's lost track position now. That's dropped him back to position four. And behind the man who, in 2017, won both the Am Cup races here at Suzuka Circuit. You can see just how damp it is and how the spray is really affecting things. Vincent Florendo, who rejoined us at Juhai and did such a good job to be on the podium twice there. He had a tough run at Shanghai. He's doing a superb job, but he'd have to say the best job of the day goes to Andrew Harrianto. Victory number one for season 2019. This puts him back into the battle. Alex Auer, a good haul of points across the line in position number two. And Burrett Birambakti inherits third after that spin by Yasser Shahin. The smile should be back, the laugh too. Let's hear from Andrew Harrianto. The beginning was a bit tricky because I didn't have any reference in front of me, but I just tried to keep it safe and um, it paid off. But towards the end, Alex was catching me so fast, so I had a lot of stress up towards the end. <laughs> I think it's very difficult to overtake in the wet in Suzuka. So with the championship at stake, I look at my rear mirrors and uh, third place is quite far away. So I really ran out of excuses to push. So first win of the year to Andrew Harrianto. Alex Au hangs on for second. Burrett Birrenbarkti is a solid third. In the Challenger Trophy, George Nackis stands on the podium second alongside Vincent Florendo. GT4, well, Shozo Tagahara did a brilliant job. Wing Deng Jar in his second appearance alongside. So round seven, there it is. Andrew Harrianto takes his first win of the year. Alex Au, two seconds back. Burrett Birrenbarkti takes the position late in the race from Yasser Shahin. Tony Bates hangs on on his debut to take position five. Vincent Florendo, George Nakis, and victory into GT4 for Tagahara ahead of Wang Ding Jia. Now that opening race at Suzuka threw up some pretty challenging conditions, Sean, reminiscent of Spa, where four of the most successful cup drivers from last season got an entry into the iconic 24-hour race against more than 70 of the world's best GT3 teams. Well, Spa threw up just about every possible scenario. Of course, reigning champion Andrew Harrianto, Yasser Shahin, Sun Jing Zhu and Jeffrey Lee were equal to the task. And despite an early setback, they managed to complete what is an epic race, exhausted, of course, but elated. They were also one of just six full amateur teams and the only one to field a four-driver lineup from the Asia-Pacific. It was an incredible feat in itself. Flags are ready, the cars are getting to be released. We're in business, we're racing. Let's look at the oh. background, it snaps away and yeah. boom. My goodness, he's done damage to the front as well as the rear. The boys are doing a very good job. They're working very hard to fix the line evenly. and the darkness in the, in the woods, very difficult for all of us. It's just such an awesome place to come and watch a race. People ask me, where should I go? And I always say, go to Spa and bring your walking shoes. The car has a, some scars already, but we are fighting, we're in it, and we hope we can end it on a good note. It appears to be raining even heavier up there from Eau Rouge up to Radion. Yeah, I think you're right. Visibility was 10 metres, aquaplaning everywhere. If they didn't call the red flag, I was coming in. 
heavy rain with standing waters and it's pretty tough for them. the goal that we have achieved today. I'm so proud of them. They really put everything on track and they, they performed really well. And that was an amazing race. Pretty deep, crazy. I'm sure after a 24 hours like this, it will be a step forward racing Asia again. We are in the top 50 of this largest DD3 race in the world. So it's all smiles. I'm very happy. It's a good team. I'll definitely come back again. Spa was a huge challenge for the Audi drivers, but over the following weeks there was a lot more racing, including the 10-hour Intercontinental GT Challenge at Suzuka in Japan, and just one week later, the popular Bang Sen Grand Prix on the beachfront in Thailand. Audi Sport claimed an emphatic victory in the Suzuka 10 Hours event on the Audi Sport R8 LMS Cup weekend in Japan, with Audi Sport Team WRT's Kelvin van der Linde, Dries van Thor and Frederick Vervish taking the win in front of 51,000 passionate Japanese fans. The brand with the four rings very nearly claiming a 1-2 finish, before a late pit stop setback dropped 2018 podium finishes, Audi Sport Team Absolute Racing off the podium with less than an hour to go. Wearing the number 25 and the Nagara blue scheme used by the very first RS model Audi 25 years ago, the Team WRT entry were in the mix at the front from the outset, moving into the lead in the third hour where they stayed for the remainder of the race. The win by the number 25 team also elevated Frederick Vervish to third in the outright driver standings with just one round remaining, the Kyle Army 9 hour in late November. Just a week after the Suzuka event, Audis were back in action at the iconic Bang Sen Grand Prix by the beach just an hour south of Bangkok, with Thailand's Be Quick Racing fielding two R8 LMS GT3s. The popular home team taking an emphatic double win on the notoriously challenging street circuit. In race one, Audi Sport Asia driver Martin Rump and rising Thai star Sandy Stuby claimed a storming win, as the second entry of Henk Kicks and Daniel Bilski struck trouble after contact from a rival. But just 24 hours later, the black and yellow colours were once more on the top step of the podium, with Kicks and Bilski claiming victory and with it, the GT3 points lead heading into the season finale in October. For us, this is the win of the year. I mean, yes, we're leading the championship, yes, we'll try everything and I would like to clinch that, but I want this one and I got it now. Audi was also in Korea for the penultimate round of the GT World Challenge Asia. And off the back of success in Fuji, the Audi Sport Asia teams were all looking to make their presence felt on the former F1 circuit. Blancpain GT World Challenge Asia made its maiden visit to the Yongam circuit and the southern tip of the South Korean peninsula. Hot off victory at Fuji, Audi Sport Asia drivers Wei Ron Tan and Martin Rump put themselves right in the box seat for a second win and another strong haul of points with a stunning effort in round 10. Using strategy to perfection, the Absolute Racing team called the number 12 Audi in early, allowing them to leapfrog their rivals. Wei Ron Tan moved to second after a string of fastest laps, but whilst within striking distance of the leader and with plenty of time left on the clock, Contact with another car that was leaving pit lane saw a controversial drive-through penalty handed down, dropping them to ninth at the flag. Audi Sport Asia team TSRT drivers David Chen and Rahel Fry were again inside the top five in round nine for the third consecutive race, while Sun Jing Zhu put his Spa 24-hour experience to good use with some impressive lap times, but setbacks in both races kept the number 13 Absolute Racing Team entry from showing their full potential. Now, having returned to victory incredibly for just the first time this season, Sean, Andrew Harianto moved to within reach of the overall points lead, paving the way for an epic second race with just one stop remaining after the Suzuka weekend. It's been an amazing season. Not one of the favourites have been capable of asserting their mark on the championship like Harry Anto and Biram Bakhti did last year. And with Alex Au starting on pole for the third time, the title equation was about to get even more interesting. 
Well, the good news here at Suzuka for round eight is that the weather has cleared. The driest running we'll see this weekend. And Alex Al has pole position as a result of the second session of qualifying alongside Bird Birumbakti, Andrew Harianto and Yasser Shahin, Tony Bates, Vincent Florendo, George Nakas, Shozo Tagahara on top for GD4 and Wang Dang Jia bringing up the tail of the field. Beautiful start. Left of screen is Alex Al. Right of screen is Bird Birumbakti. Who will get down to turn one faster? It looks like Biram Barkley's made the most of the start. Usually very aggressive off the start. So too, Harry Anto looking for a run to the inside. And Tony Bates up the inside of Yasser Shahin. Shahin hanging out wide as it looks like Biram Barkley's closed the door. And Alex Al, a bit too cautious again, perhaps, for the driver of the CTVS races entry. But Biram Barkley has got the point, just like Andrew Harry Anto in race one. He needs to take some victories. He needs to get back into this championship. He's a long way behind after a tough start to the season. And the two drivers that dominated the 2018 season have got a lot of work to do. Yasser Shahin still leading the points. Now we're on board with Tony Bates. This is off the start. Just to his left is Yasser Shahin. You should see him shortly. Here he is. He's going around the outside. Right of screen just in front is Andrew Harriando. A couple of wheels just down the edge of the grass. Nowhere to go there. But how about Shahin? extra grip around the outside he's got good drive coming out of turn two heads into the axes ahead of tony bates who's doing a fantastic job on his debut run here at suzuka so too yasser shahin they really have been the best of the rest so far this weekend but how about burrit berenbach he's absolutely flying the number 59 singer plan b by absolute entry getting away from this field getting away from alex Al. He was expected from pole position to be the man to take victory and close the gap down on Yasser Shahin, but he hasn't been able to do that. Shahin, very impressive, just gotten away now from Tony Bates and closing in under the rear wing of Andrew Harrianto, the winner during the opening damp race. It looks like Shahin really has been able to push Biram Bakhti very, very fast. He needs to have a rebuild this season. He's putting the points together. He's had a win already. Now he wants to make it a double and close down the gap to the points leaders. He's doing everything in his power at the moment, using all of the circuit on the exit of Spoon Curve. He's three seconds down the road now. Absolutely flawless performance so far from the Thai driver, really pushing his rivals to let them know he's back and he wants in on this title race. So too does Andrew Harrianto. He's really found some extra pace and he's starting to push. He's seen something using all of the circuit and then some. Shoto Takahara, what a great job he's been doing. This will be back-to-back -back wins. He's put in a lot of effort this weekend on the team's GT4 debut and he's really being rewarded with a very strong run. Well, Harry Anto's got the lights flashing. He's found something. He's closed right in under the tail of Alex Al. Now, this is important in the championship. Alex Al was next one in line behind Yasser Shahin. Shahin's a little bit further down the road in fourth position. But this is all on Andrew Harry Anto. He's found that little bit extra this weekend. This is the man we saw shades of in 2018. He was the dominant force and he's showing Alex Al he's in this. He wants round. Will he go around the outside? Yes, he's going around the outside. Around the outside at Suzuka Circuit. That's a rarity. Extra grip for the number 28 machine, the reigning champion. He's just driven straight around. One of the most experienced GT Cup campaigners in this part of the world. What an incredible job by Andrew Harrianto. Let's go on board with Alex Al. There's Andrew Harrianto, left of screen. He's got extra braking. He's gone in deeper than the Hong Kong driver, and he's got better drive out of turn two and absolutely powered away. Nothing, it seems, Alex Al can do about that. He's just going to have to watch the tail of Harrianto and try and push him into an error. He's gaining a little bit going up the hill. Has he got a chance to get it back, or does Harrianto have him covered? This is fantastic racing, just what we want to see at one of the toughest circuits on the cup calendar. Here is Harry Anto lining up Alex Al. He'd obviously seen something a couple of laps before. He knew he had that advantage. Lots of grip on the outside there. The track had been cleaned up by rain the last couple of days. And he's used that advantage to absolute perfection to take the lead of this raceway. Whoa, he's really throwing the car around. And he's gone in very deep, coming into Spoon Curve, just on the exit, got onto the gas, and he's managed to gather it all up and drive up the hill away from Alex Al. Hold on to the position. Alex Al's having another look. He's gone in too deep down at the chicane. He's lost a little bit of ground now. He's going to have to be very, very careful not to give it away to Yasser Shahin behind. This is down at the hairpin, a replay. Vincent Florendo, he's gone in too deep, just managed to gather it up before getting bogged in the gravel. 
But up front, no dramas for Burr Burren Bakley. He is streeting away six seconds up now on the field and extending the lead with almost every lap. Harry Ando is pushing as hard as he can. There's nothing, though, that he can do about the tie driver. Burr Burren Bakley wanted this one. It's the last corner. He's got it. It's in the bag. This is win number two. This gives him just what he needs and puts him back into the championship race. Great points too for Andrew Harrianto. He crosses the line in position number two. And third across the line, that's third for Yasser Shahin. There's been a late drama for Alex Howe. That moves the points leader up. But how happy is Birat Birin He punches the air, victory, that's what he needs. And this big, passionate Japanese crowd treated to another epic cup race here at Suzuka and rewarded too, watching Shozo Tagahara take his second win in GT4 on his debut in the cup. He'll be very, very happy with that. If you want to see happy, wait for Burrit Beer in Barkley. There'll be celebrations by the team. This has been a long time coming, and what a time to do it. I just want to have fun, you know, because um, I think the championship part, I don't really care anymore. But just have fun and enjoy the race. Try your best. Uh, Alex was a bit too fast for me at the beginning, even though he had 50 kilos. But towards the end, I could see him struggling with the tyres especially with that extra 50 kilos. So, yeah, I just need to apply some pressure. And I think I made a good move on the outside. And there you have it. Victory in round eight to Burrit Birenbakti alongside Andrew Harrianto, who by virtue of his second place also joins Anthony Liu in the seat for the 2020 Suzuka 10-hour. Yasser Shahin third, an extension in his points lead. And it's Alex Auer, Tony Bates, Vincent Florendo, George Nakas, Shozo Tagahara takes top honours once more in GT4 and Wing Dang Jia. A second challenger trophy for the weekend to Vincent Florendo from George Nakas. As a result of Burit Birenbakti's win, the championship gets very interesting with two races to go. Shahin leads on 108. Alex Howe, Andrew Harrianto, Burit Birenbakti and Tony Bates are top five. And in GT4, Shang Yan Wen leads by just 13 points now over Wing Dang Jia. Shozo Tagahara's back-to-back -back wins gives him third in the points from Lee Lin and Mark Williamson. Congratulations to the winner. Take a photo, please. Well, that's a wrap for what was a busy close to the summer season of motorsport for teams in Asia, Mark, but it's certainly not over. We've got the GT World Challenge final in Shanghai at the end of September and, of course, the final round of the eighth season of the Cup in mid-November in Malaysia. And with the Cup still wide open with as many as five drivers in contention for the championship, there's still plenty to race for. We'll see you next time. Goodbye.